morning, uh, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here in Bali in uh, Sensations, and uh, I really thank uh, Serge and Alex for the invitation. Um, such a nice place. I know it's the, your last day. Uh, I will try uh, not to become too boring. Please interrupt me uh, in any time you feel like. Uh, I, w I want us to have a live uh, discussion and not uh, just another lecture. So, as Alex mentioned, I will uh, talk about uh, the send to shock experiments in Smart Set on Dare. Uh, we applied uh, for uh, the experiment uh, about a year ago, and uh, we were among uh, the four experiments which was uh, selected for uh, uh, running the experiment in Smart Set on Dare um, infrastructure. Uh, I know that you are aware with the Smart Set on Dare. Uh, infrastructure already, so I will try to emphasize the idea of the experiment and I would like to focus on uh, what we did. Uh, similarly to your assignments, uh, we had to use the smart set on their uh, infrastructure, right? So I will try to, to explain how we progress on that and what's the idea. Uh, first of all, from the title of the talk, uh, Sensor Stock and Human Sense, I, I guess you realize that the effort and the idea of the experiment was to combine the sensor data with the social data that are produced daily in the cities. Especially in a smart, set, uh, in a smart city like Saturn there, uh, we have both of these activities running all the time. I mean, the sensors produce uh, measurements all the time, and the people, on the other hand, produce uh, social data and they have interactions all the time. So uh, my presentation will focus first on the idea of the experiment. Uh, then I will go on with the design, uh, how uh, we uh, proceeded uh, to an architecture, to a framework, and how we implemented it. As Alex mentioned, we are almost uh, done with the experiment. Uh, so I will have some uh, short demos uh, to, to uh, demonstrate of how this works. Uh, now, in terms of the presentation, uh, just as I said, not to make it a boring one, I have uh, three parts organized. The first part, uh, we describe the idea, and we describe uh, the prior uh, to, the, to the experiment uh, implementation part. And of course, I will uh, proceed to the overview of the experiment, the challenges, and the audiences, and the impact. Then I will go on uh, with the architecture, with the design issues, and finally, as I said, I will uh, demonstrate um, some of the, uh, of the uh, parts that are already running. So, uh, I, I mentioned that already, uh, the idea was uh, how to integrate sensor data with uh, social network users' activities. Uh, I know that during all of this week uh, you became familiar with uh, Internet of Things, uh, with all of the sensors, uh, applications that you might have uh, at the technical level. So I would say that our uh, send to shock uh, experiment, the concept, uh, is a little bit higher uh, in the applications uh, level, I would say. So the objective was to find uh, these interactions among the sensor data and the social network users. Now, the motivation, of course, was, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, we have quantitative results. We have numbers coming out of the sensors. But the question is, how do people react on those numbers? How do people uh, perceive uh, the humidity, the temperature in the city? and whether there are issues uh, that uh, both of uh, humans and sensors can uh, integrate and can help each other, let's say, in order to build smarter applications. So the effort was to go to qualitative results and not just quantitative results. So quantitative comes from uh, the sensor itself, uh, themselves, and the qualitative comes from the human-generated uh, data. Uh, now, uh, as I said, uh, you are all uh, familiar with Smart Set and Dare, and uh, the smart cities are growing uh, internationally. Uh, the aim of the smart cities is that once we have uh, the infrastructure, we would like to be able to find phenomena, like 
traffic congestion, like some uh, pollution in particular areas. At the same time, we want to take actions. The authorities would like to elect maybe citizens. Uh, we would like to find groups that are in need. And of course, uh, we have also the long-term actions, like the ones that the authority needs to make on the basis of these measurements. So our experiment uh, has uh, taken into consideration all of these efforts that are done in smart cities. And at the same time, we took in mind, and for us it was important to find out what smart users' uh, role would be in, uh, in such infrastructures. So the question is, uh, what is the effect on humans if there is uh, pollution in an area? What is it that certain social groups can say? And how can this social response can be detected in an automated manner? And as you, of course, you can guess, uh, the users' uh, social interactions are very easily captured in a social network. So uh, the pre-experiment, before applying, let's say, for the experiment, mm -hmm. Smart Center there, we carried out, uh, we carried out uh, some um, analysis, I would say, uh, which was based in Twitter, in order to find out what's the situation in the southern there area. Uh, as you may have heard, or most of you might have, uh, I don't know, familiarity with social networks, uh, that Twitter is able uh, to, to capture the geolocation. So we monitor tweets uh, captured in 25 days uh, in the geographic area of southern there. And uh, we had a uh, total number of tweets, uh, and you can see the number here. We had uh, tweets that had URLs, we had uh, tweets with hashtags, and uh, of course the geo coordinates uh, were quite enough uh, in order for us to carry out an analysis. And uh, we realized that um, there are some uh, conclusions where we can come up with for the particular period as, uh, as to the social network activity in Twitter in the Southern Dell area. <coughs> so we realized that uh, Southern Dell users are quite familiar with the well-known uh, social networks uh, we all use uh, daily, like uh, YouTube, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Foursquare, and so on. Going deeper into the analysis, uh, we found out some uh, popular hashtags, some popular topics that the users are interested in. Uh, Twitter traffic, tweet traffic. Uh, sorry, my Spanish is not uh, that good, of course. Uh, is a Twitter-based web service that um, uh, reported uh, that the users can report traffic conditions in certain there. So it, it appeared quite uh, quite often in their tweeting uh, activity. And uh, by the hashtag analysis, we realized that there are in certain there active, active users in social networks, which uh, really expose opinions. And those opinions, if we'd like to have uh, categories, have to do with certain events, uh, have to do maybe with some certain locations, and uh, there are also some topics that we could detect, like accidents and traffic, uh, where we had some tweets there. So having uh, this um, social, I would say, analysis in the area, uh, the sensor shock experiment idea was to utilize the sensor measurement and uh, on that uh, add and integrate the human sensing. And uh, by human sensing, we mean uh, that once you have users in, let's say, certain there with mobile phones, then you have them to be uh, themselves as human sensors. So we said, OK, the sensors might produce a temperature, but how uh, will this is perceived uh, uh, by the users in certain there? Is it true that temperature is uh, hot, cold? Is it? Uh, uh, verified by the users that um, really the measurements of the sensors are accurate. So uh, this was the initial idea. And uh, we proceeded in designing a certain experiment cycle, I would say. As you can see, uh, if we start, let's say, from the sensor network, you have the sensor network itself producing numbers, as I said. 
And the idea we had is that if we get out of this number an automated service which will produce natural language postings, and these postings are exposed to the social network, then you can have users reacting on that, and then based on this new social network which will have sensors and users together, you can verify measurements, you can recommend applications, and you can improve the sensor network itself. Is this cycle clear? Maybe is it better if I give an example? You have a question here? Uh, if, if I give an example, let's say social uh, network part here, we have sensors producing values for the temperature, right? And if this temperature is over a certain threshold, then this means that we can produce an alert. This alert, though, uh, will detect the number, but it will come out as a phrase that the users can understand. So this phrase is uh, easily posted, can easily be posted in the social network. We generated, uh, we defined some users uh, in uh, Twitter, and then these users in Twitter, which are not a real person, but they are sensor users, can get the postings, and around them you can have social network activity which can be analyzed and so on. I hope this cycle will become clear uh, as I go on, and we describe uh, the components and uh, the ideas and uh, the demos. But if you have something to ask at this point, please let me know. Okay. So, uh, in going uh, into the details of uh, designing the experiment, uh, we realized that uh, we needed to implement a back-end module and a front-end module. So this was the first uh, proposal, the first idea, that at the back-end module we need to uh, go on with all of the processing, which means the statistical analysis, which will capture sensor measurements, will detect peaks, will detect uh, over threshold values. Uh, the recommendation part, the alerting part, and the human versus sensing verification should be carried out such that in the front end, where we have both a web and a mobile application, we can expose the results to the users, and of course we can uh, have various users like the citizens, the visitors in Southern Dell, but also the city authorities, and uh, we believe that the experiment is valuable for the city authorities, but of course also, as I will explain, uh, the Smart Set and their uh, project uh, consortium as well. So with this design you know, of the platform in mind, uh, we, as I said, uh, proceeded in uh, suggesting a specific sensor to posting uh, I would say approach, which will take the sensor value and it will produce a natural language, pro with a natural language processing interpreter, will produce postings. This means that uh, this sensor data observer gets the measurements and as I said, once something is wrong, once let's say a value is a minus 999, 999 or something, then we have the posting which is produced automatically as an alert, as a certain sentence easily to be uh, posted in a social network. We have worked uh, already with Twitter. We are now uh, carrying out the experiment in Foursquare. And as you can see, we have utilized also some other social networks. And then at the front end, uh, we can offer a recommendation to the citizens uh, we can inform the authorities of whether there are some uh, sensors which exhibit malfunctioning or some out-of-range values. And of course, uh, we can uh, compare, uh, as I said, uh, the sensor and the human uh, opinion, the sensor values and the human opinions in order to validate uh, the correctness of the, of the results produced. Uh, I'm sure you already discussed the issues about uh, sensors uh, malfunctioning. Uh, I think uh, 
uh, it's said that there, this is also the case that, uh, as in every sensor installation, uh, some of the sensors, let's say, might have a low battery issue, some other of the sensors uh, might have uh, malfunction problems for a reason, and so on. So our experiment captures uh, this uh, malfunctioning. Uh, what we believe was uh, the innovative idea in this is that uh, we needed uh, to have uh, different thresholds per different sensor type. This means uh, that we have different streams of data for humidity, for noise, for uh, nitro dioxide, and so on. So for each of those, we need to check for different thresholds, of course. There are different thresholds in temperature, different th thresholds in humidity. So the postings are created on the base of the lexicons of each of these uh, sensor types. This means you have different postings for the temperature, different postings, of course, for the humidity, and so on. So the postings uh, then are uh, exposed to the social network, and here you can see in this image the social network graph, where uh, the dark uh, nodes are the sensor users, and the white nodes are the human users. So we actually have a social network which interacts, and on this social network we don't just have humans or sensors separately, we have together humans and sensors as, a, as an active social network. Sorry. Sure. You said you uh, said something little about the fact that some sensors may have wrong data. Yeah. Are you caring about this in this project or yeah. you rely on the Santander infrastructure to uh, check out the outliers? Uh, well, what we are doing is that we are, uh, we are offering suggestions to the Santander uh, people. Like, uh, as you will see from the statistics part we have, there are some missing values. One of the issues we had to deal with were the, uh, these missing values. So we employed such smoothness functions which will, uh, let's say, find the average without taking uh, into account these extreme values. But uh, with the report and the application uh, that you will see later, uh, the, let's say the authorities can go into this graph and find out where the missing values were and when. Uh, we don't actually, I would say, offer um, solutions to uh, improving the, the state of the sensors. We are just exposing the problem to them. So then the city authority can see where the problem is uh, which of the sensors are uh, not working, and they can proceed. Yes. So the anomaly, anomaly detection. Yes. In the yeah. end, you, uh, so the smoothing function is described. Are these anomaly detection algorithms? Or? Yeah. Uh, actually, we use R language, which has uh, already some of the functions there uh, that they perform. Uh, they use interpolation for prediction of the same time. So. Uh, 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 it also, you will see in the statistics part that it, it's really obvious where we have those gaps in the, in the values. And um, the granularity also is important because, uh, the, let's say, the, the ones which are, who are responsible for the sensor network can detect the time and the, uh, the exact point of where the sensor malfunctions. And at the same time, with the statistics, they can see, let's say, whether uh, the particular sensor has malfunctioning for a specific day, uh, for a specific time during the day. So maybe they can detect that there is an issue uh, with a specific time, and they can reorganize uh, the sensor. Uh, so you have said, okay. So in, as input to this uh, sensor storage to some system, you are taking all raw data. We take all data. All right? raw data. So raw data, Santander yeah. is not providing some kinds of pre-processing uh, no. to, to upper layers or application level that want to deal just with uh, information. Okay. Well, we use the, uh, the streams that are provided by the University of Cantabria in uh, Santander. Uh -huh. And for us, uh, it was uh, yes, raw data. So that's all. Yeah. Yes?
this posting that Samsung of struggling there in terms of um, like the average of sensors in an AV or a single sensor? No, exactly. Thank you for the question. I will uh, mention to, uh, I was going to refer to that. Uh, we actually uh, perform what we call virtual sensor nodes, where we have uh, some of the sensors being groups based on a KNN approach, a K nearest neighbors approach. Because uh, it was very, very uh, exhausting computationally to have just single nodes. And the idea is, of course, that um, you know you have sensors close to each other. What you expect is that all of them would have, on the average, the same uh, value. And uh, this virtual node uh, evaluates the sensor values on the base of an average. Yes. Okay, but uh, in that case, how can uh, you do the anomaly detection? Because, uh, let's say, in a group of like, ten sensors, maybe one sensor is long, mm -hmm. then. And the posting would not be that deviant from um, mm -hmm. the normal. Yeah, we offer per sensor uh, graphs, I would say, with uh, their uh, behavior. And uh, the alert uh, goes and it is uh, functional once even one of the sensors uh, has this uh, anomaly detection. And as you will see, I believe that uh, some of these patients will be replied. Uh, as I uh, explained more, uh, so please come back if it's not uh, covered. Okay, because I need to mention some things first before coming to the response. Okay, we'll go on and... Uh, so the architecture, uh, as I said, uh, in proceeding on how to design the experiment, we had to, to decide of uh, how uh, the architecture would be and uh, which of the components uh, are needed in order uh, to proceed with the ideas I mentioned. So, uh, as I already mentioned, from SmartSat and their platform, we get the sensor data. And uh, we need, of course, a component which will monitor the sensor data streams. Uh, of course, uh, we need uh, some particular data stores for the sensor data. And at the same time, uh, which of course uh, it is uh, run in parallel, we needed to have a component for the social data. So as you can see here, I will show this on the, on the slide, you have the sensor data here monitoring and the corresponding data store. We have the social data observer and have the corresponding social data uh, data store. So the problem was how to integrate those two and how to finally offer the applications in the front end, which as I said is both web application and the mobile application. So in order to do that and in order to integrate these components, we designed and we proceeded to uh, what we call interface component. It's not uh, user, it's not GUI, it's not a user interface, but we call it interface because it connects and it is uh, like a backbone of the, of the, the other different uh, components. Now, this interface also uh, takes care of the statistical analysis of the verification I've mentioned. And uh, we need it also to keep uh, data stores for statistics, for users of our mobile application, but also for the geographic area uh, data. As you will see, there are certain geographical areas. Uh, I don't know if you have seen this already for Southern Air, but we proceeded on the basis of the Southern Air geographic areas uh, that were given to us by the Smarter Southern Air project. So keep uh, this architecture in mind. I will go into more detail uh, into that uh, later on. Uh, and just to summarize the first part and to uh, just give you a hint of uh, why the, the experiment uh, is uh, challenging and why is it useful, of course we had to deal with uh, demanding data processing because we had uh, the sensor data in produced in continuous manner. We had to uh, proceed with real-time processing and of course the data are not of the same type. We have heterogeneous data. Some data are from sensors, other data are from humans. Uh, we have applications and so on. Now, uh, improving the smart set and their infrastructure is also a challenge uh, in the sense that, as I said, uh, our effort was 
to offer suggestions for the smart set and their infrastructure and uh, of course uh, proceeding to qualitative results uh, was always an issue uh, that's why having the humans uh, reporting and humans and sensor was uh, is important for us now the audiences uh, maybe are obvious uh, since you've discussed a lot about um, the smart cities but of course uh, it's uh, the, the citizens and the visitors uh, we, as you will see in the application we have developed, we have uh, recommendations for uh, users navigating. Uh, we have uh, uh, the CO, the noise, uh, the routes uh, that are suggested. Uh, the authorities also can uh, utilize our experiments and uh, of course uh, the authorities can uh, gather uh, the data and we have prepared the statistical module in such a way that it becomes useful to, the, to them. And uh, of course uh, we hope that the Smart and Dead Consortium can use uh, the results that we have so far and the results that we will produce at the end of the experiment. And uh, of course the impact overall uh, uh, that we foresee from the experiment, that is uh, citizens, uh, as I said, um, authorities and um, project consortium and also the European community. Now in terms uh, of our group, uh, our group in Aristotle University of Thessaloniki's expertise is in uh, web communities, in social data mining, uh, in clustering and data management and content delivery networks. And uh, I would like to mention that uh, in this experiment, in the team, uh, there were uh, about 10 people involved. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the names of the colleagues and the, the expertise that they had. Uh, we had uh, carried out the experiment since, uh, practically since uh, March. And uh, we have continuously worked uh, together in order to, to finalize uh, the deliverables, but also the, uh, the components that, uh, that I saw. So that was the part one. Uh, are there, uh, with the ideas, I said, the challenges and the first, uh, the first uh, design issues. Uh, before proceeding to part two, uh, is it something that you'd like to point out, discuss? Uh, Okay. Um, so, to understand better the mm -hmm. context in which you, yeah. um, you are moving, mm -hmm. the idea is to um, get a better understanding of sensors or to somehow sense also human behavior. I mean, where is, mm -hmm. where is the focus of your particular work? I think your background is on social networks, so mm -hmm. probably you are more focusing humans, but here you talk a lot about sensors and sensors performing actions that we normally uh, associate with humans, like postings. Yeah. So I would like to understand what, uh, apart from the project, but with what, with, which is your context. Yes, yes, yes. What is the main uh, yeah. maybe purpose? Yes, I would say that the main idea was the validation of uh, data produced by sensors but by humans as well. As, as you mentioned, and as I, I think I emphasized, our group uh, has no expertise in sensors. Uh, our group has expertise in social networks. So for us, it's challenging to find applications that will not just deal with social networks uh, per se, but will utilize social networks with other types of data. This is needed uh, today because uh, the role that the social networks play is not restricted just in uh, Facebook and likes and so on, but we have emerging uh, new markets in one sense. Uh, but at the same time, also what emerges is that the humans can act as sensors. Uh, already in the European Union, uh, there are some projects uh, which have to do with uh, the so-called uh, social sensing. So once we have, uh, as humans, once we have at hand, a mobile device, we actually act as sensors. So that was the main uh, idea. Uh, go beyond uh, the typical social network analysis and utilize social network analysis with a very interesting uh, sensor data production that is there anyway. Uh, go on. Okay. Okay, so, um, 
I'm, I'm not a, I'm not using the software methods yeah. or anything like that, so I don't know how much mm -hmm. uh, time it uh, it's consuming. Mm -hmm. But don't you? Is it possible that people that are already uh, overwhelmed by contents? Mm -hmm. I would not even speak about information because often it's not information, it becomes information at a higher level. Mm -hmm. So would they be ready to even process data from sensors or would they be, what's the mindset of people when they receive such, such type of information? Mm -hmm. And maybe they know that it cannot be reliable. Yeah. So it's not information but it's just data to be processed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right that uh, there is, of course, criticism in how we use social networks and uh, if the information is viable and so on. Now, the idea is that um, we are not planning in developing another social network. We have so many social networks already. And as you will see in our mobile application, uh, we permit uh, login via Facebook account or via Twitter account. So we want people to be involved in order uh, to, for them to act uh, as uh, human sensors in the city they live. For example, in Southern Air, uh, they have, uh, maybe uh, this was uh, described in the tutorial, uh, there are some uh, what they call the pioneer users, I think that's the terminology. There are some users in Southern Air who are very determined in contributing in the, the experiments. Of course, there are other users who are not uh, devoted, uh, let's say, to social networks. Uh, but the idea, and we had, uh, once we wrote the proposal, we had the scenario there uh, that there was a student who had some health problems. So uh, the conditions in pollution are important uh, once, uh, let's say, he or she travels uh, within the city. So for such types of users, like users who are uh, who are having issues uh, with their health, for example, and knowing from which route to go and what uh, routes to avoid <laughs> in real time with uh, a device and a social network access uh, would become very easy. So that was the idea, that we would like to address uh, particular user groups and uh, supporting their navigation in the city in an automated manner. I don't know if this uh, is a response. Yes, okay. Any other opinion? Uh, discussion? No? Okay, so I will proceed to the more uh, technical um, part in the sense that uh, I will uh, first uh, describe um, the specification and the components design in more detail. Uh, I will uh, explain how the requirements were set and of course uh, the control flow diagram I hope uh, will uh, facilitate the discussion and I uh, will briefly outline the technologies that we have uh, utilized. Now uh, I already saw uh, displayed this uh, architecture so the idea was uh, to proceed with each of these components, implement them in such a way that they will become functional. And uh, of course, uh, we wanted to, to start with the data at hand. It took us a while to understand how the, the sensor data are produced, in which form, how uh, can we get access to them. Maybe you already got such an experience in, uh, in the summer school. So the first part was decide how uh, to proceed with the sensor data monitoring. So uh, for us, the sensor data monitoring component, of course, should be uh, responsible for the sensor data retrieval, the aggregation of the sensor data based on the geographic location of the sensor nodes, and of course, the sensor data analysis and the alert generation. So as I've mentioned uh, before, maybe in uh, your question about the nodes, it was a question whether we will deal with sensor data aggregated values in order to proceed with the alerts produced, producing. What I mean is that um, you have the so-called virtual nodes being defined and we generate alerts whenever 
we have some of the environmental sensor produce uh, values produced exceed certain thresholds. Uh, and of course, the alerts uh, were, as you will see in the control flow diagram, the alerts were uh, exposed and were um, delivered to the mobile application, to the statistical analysis component as well for further analysis. Now, the idea is that the Smart Santander City, uh, the Santander City itself, is uh, divided into certain geographical areas. I will uh, expose them uh, later in the slides. And uh, it is important just to keep uh, in mind that for us, we have the so-called aggregated sensor value. And uh, we calculated there the weighted mean of sensor measurements uh, inside the specific geographic area at the specific time. So time is important, location is important in order to evaluate these aggregated sensor values. Uh, now, in terms of the other components, uh, we have uh, the social data observer, which is, of course, uh, responsible for capturing and collecting the data, geolocated data, and also for the user-generated uh, content mining. Now, users in Twitter do not just uh, tweet text, but they also include URLs which link to other uh, social networks, maybe, or to other sites. Uh, there is a lot of uh, connection between uh, the social network, uh, the Twitter URLs and other social networks, uh, like Instagram, for example, like Vine for videos, and so on. Uh, Flickr as well. And uh, I will show you, as I said later on, some examples of that. Now, the interface component was responsible for the service provision and the data exchange. And, uh, of course, uh, as I said, uh, the backbone of the, of the experiment is responsible for uh, managing and for uh, handling uh, all of the, of the other components together. It's like the glue of the, the experiment. Uh, the mobile application itself uh, is um, designed and it is uh, developed uh, based on the current standard of mobile, applica mobile applications. Uh, we wanted to have uh, the mobile application a lightweight one in the sense that the, the users can easily uh, verify the alerting or can uh, easily uh, see the map uh, of the city, the location where the problem is, uh, have the recommendations there. Uh, this will become more clear uh, in the demos. That's why I'm just running a little bit here. I will come back in details if you like uh, after, uh, after the demo. And of course, uh, we wanted the users with their mobile, as I said, uh, to become uh, sensor, uh, sensors and to report also the, their feedback and their opinions. Now, in terms of the statistical analysis and the web application, the statistical analysis is important uh, because uh, by uh, statistical analysis of the sensor and the aggregated sensor values, we can have uh, prediction, as you will see, we can have anomaly detection, and we can have uh, at the same time analysis of the social network user responses. And these uh, statistical analysis conclusions uh, we target the authorities when we hope that this will be useful for them. Now, in the web application part, uh, we have the ability to visualize the sensor and the anomalies, as I said, in, uh, in detail, per groups of sensors, per sensor itself. And uh, as I said, you will see this uh, once we come to the, to the demo part. Now, in terms of the data stores and how to store the data, we had several uh, discussions on uh, what is best, uh, where to store the data, and uh, what, is the, what is the need. So we have uh, several data stores, uh, like uh, the one for the sensor data, the ones for the user data, where we keep user profiling, we have uh, authentication, and uh, we preserve all the anonymity constraints and all of the uh, policies that are uh, suggested by, uh, 
uh, the social network APIs, like the Twitter API, Flickr API, and so on. We have the social media data, we have the statistics data, and we have the geographic areas data stores. Uh, of course, in the social media data, we keep, uh, we perform pre-processing mm -hmm. and we keep uh, clean content. Uh, I mean, uh, we have stemming there, uh, we, uh, we report the hashtags and so on. And uh, for the particular social networks, uh, for Flickr, for example, we keep uh, images and metadata. Okay. Maybe I became too boring uh, already. <laughs> so uh, I'm just trying to, to describe the, the idea. And then um, I hope the demo part will be more interesting. <laughs> can, can I just ask a question? Yeah. Uh, we had this discussion yesterday a little about uh, using uh, Twitter. There was a person posting, uh, I think, uh, weather measurements mm -hmm. on their Twitter account. And uh, one of the colleagues told us that it's, uh, according to terms and conditions of Twitter, it's not uh, allowed to use that content, even not to, not to republish it or to use it in whatever other way. Do you know anything about that? Uh, yeah, the Twitter policy is quite uh, strict uh, in the sense of which data should be exposed, which not, and uh, of course there are limits there. Uh, the thing is that uh, we have uh, respected uh, the Twitter API restrictions in this sense. Uh, but uh, the idea is that we generated user accounts, so we were uh, the creators of the accounts in Twitter for the sensor measurements, the alert postings. And our postings were not reported in the form of the raw data set and there, but there were uh, sentences saying, uh, okay, the humidity limit is exceeded and so on. So I would say that the, we cover the raw data and uh, with the, this posting, uh, because as you said, yes, there are uh, certain uh, issues uh, in terms of the copyrighted uh, content and the copyrighted uh, data. This is always an issue. Uh, the other uh, thing is that um, in these data stores, uh, we have uh, respected all of the anonymity concerns, as you will see, uh, all the users' uh, uh, personal data are not uh, given, or as the users are IDs. Uh, that's why once you utilize the Twitter login uh, or the Facebook login, uh, you respect uh, the rules and uh, you have uh, the anonymity preserved. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, in setting the requirements, uh, before proceeding to the implementation, uh, we had to distinguish between uh, which of the requirements are functional and which are non-functional in the sense that well, we wanted to identify uh, which uh, have uh, priority, uh, what is the description of each of the requirements, uh, have comments and so on. Now the idea was that we have different requirements for different uh, topics, different issues in the experiment and we ended up in those uh, requirement categories that you can see here. This means that we uh, set, set it up uh, data, let's say, uh, sensor data requirements, and these are the abbreviations. So I will not go into all of the detail, but for example, uh, the ALR abbreviation is for the alerts requirements. Uh, the AACC is for how user access to send to shock applications and so on. So setting the requirements also was um, time-consuming uh, process because uh, we needed to set the requirements before implementing the experiment. Now, I will briefly pass over some of the requirement description, uh, which of course uh, are given uh, for your reference later on. We can give the, uh, uh, maybe we can give the slides, of course. Uh, and uh, if you have uh, maybe some uh, questions, uh, we can go into the more detail. So in uh, prioritizing the, the, the requirements, uh, we decided, of course, uh, that it was obvious we have some requirements that are mandatory. That means that these uh, requirements must be met in order for the send to experiment to be implemented. 
Uh, we had some of the requirements which we call desirable. This means that we would like to implement them, uh, but we didn't know in the design phase whether this was possible or not. And then we have the so-called optional ones, in the sense that uh, uh, we would like to implement it, but um, it was not so critical to be implemented uh, during the, the experiment. Now, I will, uh, as I said, briefly pass uh, to, through the requirements description. For example, here, uh, in the DAT, it's the data, the sensor data requirements. You can see how we set the requirements. We said that uh, we have uh, DAT number one and DAT number two uh, to be two mandatory requirements. We briefly described each of those. Uh, we explained why. And, of course, at each of the requirements, we had the components, or the component, or the components where these requirements are involved. So, as you can see, the, that number one is uh, how to access the smart cylinder uh, sensor data. Of course, this is necessary. And uh, in order to do that, uh, uh, we would like to be able to retrieve uh, the current, but also the past smart cylinder sensor values. Uh, getting data from the archive uh, values of uh, certain their uh, sensors was important for our statistics and for our implementing of the statistical modules and for uh, finding out how, uh, how to work with them. Uh, the specification of geographic areas was also important because, uh, as you know, the sensors are located in various places in the city. So it was important to capture which geographic area had a problem or the threshold is exceeded, where the users are, and so on. Uh, these are some just other requirements for user recommendations. Uh, we have a mandatory one and a desire desirable one. Uh, the suggestion of areas and points of interest to city visitors is a desirable one, which are now carrying out. So. Uh, it, it, because we wanted uh, to have the visitors the ability to find out of routes on the basis of uh, the sensor measurements. And uh, again, uh, we have a mandatory to become the route recommendation based on sensor measurement information. As you will see, the first one, uh, the first requirement is already implemented. Uh, the second one, which as I said it was a desirable one, is uh, running right now and we hope we'll be able to, to offer that in the application. Some requirements for the web, uh, for, you, for user as a sensor and so on. As I said, the, these are not uh, uh, maybe of interest for everybody, uh, just um, I'm going uh, quickly over them. Is there, is there a question up to now? Maybe I talk too much? Any question up to now? No? Now, this is an experiment uh, control flow that uh, we have uh, designed. Uh, you can see all of the different, maybe it seems a little bit complicated, but uh, it uh, displays and it exposes the, the flow uh, that we have. Starting from the smart set and then the sensor measurements, we had to perform the data pre-processing in order to have these aggregated data files. Uh, as, as I said, I will explain it better in the demo. Now, we keep these aggregated values, and then these aggregated values are important for extreme condition detection and for posting in social media. Now, at the social media part, these alerting is in collaboration with the social network of uh, users who access the social network through the mobile application. And then, of course, we need to have the sensor data for the statistical analysis along with the user data. And then the statistical data feeds the web application. And of course, we have, again, the social data activity, which is also used in the analysis. Uh, I hope that by having this control flow in mind, uh, you will be able to realize how the implementation uh, proceeded uh, once we stop in the web application, once we stop in the mobile application, and the statistical analysis will be also there. Okay? 
So, um, the technologies that um, uh, chosen uh, tools we use for each of the, of the components uh, is the ones that you can see here. Uh, we use no SQL databases like MongoDB for uh, the social network. MongoDB. MongoDB for uh, the social network uh, uh, activity. And we actually utilize uh, no SQL databases for most of the social network analysis that we carry out. Uh, the same framework is a PHP framework uh, for uh, very easy to be used for the interface component. Uh, I'm sure you know the technologies, uh, at least most of them. Uh, PhoneGab was utilized in order to develop the mobile application for both platforms, uh, iOS and Android. Uh, that was also a question that we had in the, in the process of developing the mobile application, because developing native code uh, is uh, much better, uh, but uh, we didn't have time to proceed in native code for Android and native code for iOS, so that's why we proceeded with PhoneGap. But the, of course the, the application is offered in both of the platforms. Uh, and um, the rest of the technology, especially for statistics, we utilize the R programming language which is an open source uh, R, uh, R package. It's very, very useful. Uh, it had uh, so many um, of the uh, statistical analysis tools that we needed already implemented. And uh, of course, we utilized also all of the third party APIs that I've mentioned Twitter API, Flickr API. Uh, we are currently developing the Foursquare uh, inclusion into our uh, application, so Foursquare API is also utilized, but it's not completed yet. It's one part uh, that is missing from the, from the implementation. Yes. The mobile application is uh, always running in background for the user, or, or is it uh, only based on direct interaction with the user? I mean, do you have any requirements for the application to run in background? No, you can. Uh, first of all, the uh, the mobile application uh, will most probably be uploaded openly, uh, but this will happen by the smartphone and their. Uh, no, no, I mean one. Uh, when it's installed on the mobile yeah. phone, mm -hmm. is it an application that the user is just interacting with? Yes. Or are there some requirements to have it running on the smartphone even when it's in the in the pocket? No, no you can uh, run it once uh, you have it installed in your uh, mobile application. Yeah. Uh, you can run the application. Uh, maybe you, you mean uh, you have access to the servers and so on? No, no. I mean, maybe I don't understand. On, on, on Android or iPhone mobile uh, mm -hmm. applications and have two, two ways of running, in foreground or in background. Oh, okay. So uh, are there any requirements for the application mm -hmm. to be running, like uh, getting alerts and alert the user, or once I close the application, it will com be completely closed? The application is closed once you close the application. So it's not but it's not uh, running in the background. It runs okay. in uh, once the user is active, and uh, it detects uh, the user location, it enables uh, uh, human uh, sensing only in the location where the user is detected. And uh, as you will see, the alerting uh, for the user is uh, done only for uh, the user's uh, subscribed areas. Uh, so we try to, uh, to keep uh, all of these issues uh, met because uh, uh, you could have fault uh, users' uh, uh, opinions or fault users' uh, detected values. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I proceed, I think, to the most, uh, I hope, to the most interesting <laughs> part, uh, because uh, I would like uh, also to discuss, and I will have some uh, videos uh, in order to, to show you of how this uh, works. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, in terms of the implementation part, um, let me summarize, of course, that uh, the experiment is about informing uh, 
citizens, authorities, uh, suggesting, alerting, and engaging. Uh, the issue that you mentioned about users and how you engage the users is certainly an issue here. Uh, of course, uh, we wanted to increase the interaction, the alerting, the social media, and they have the users and sensors. I've mentioned this already. And uh, in the demo part, I will uh, explain, I will show you how the mobile application and how the web application are utilized. And we will see how this runs so with the objectives we have. Now, the architecture has the smart Santander and the social network data being fed in those uh, back end and front end um, uh, modules uh, that I've mentioned. This is just another screenshot of uh, the architecture. So, uh, let's try to see how the data uh, monitoring, the retrieval, the cleansing, and so on is uh, performed. And uh, I would like to verify that for the central data monitoring, we retrieve the data, we have to clean the data uh, in order to remove uh, some of the, <coughs> the repeated values, some of the extreme values, and end up with having time series uh, and uh, virtual nodes and alerting. Uh, I hope this will become uh, more clear. Now, the virtual nodes that I've mentioned before are defined on the basis of this uh, Santander shape file that was given to us by the Smart Santander uh, coordinators. Uh, what's the idea here? There is this uh, Instituto National, uh, Institute of Stati National Institute of Statistics in Spain, which uh, separates uh, Santander in these specific geographical areas. Uh, the separation is based on uh, regular uh, uh, updating that the, uh, the National Statistics Office uh, has. And uh, we got uh, this distinction of certain there, and we respected uh, this distinction in geographic areas in all of the experiments that you will see. Uh, these are 148, if I recall correctly, I think this is the number, 148 uh, different areas. Uh, given to us, as I said, from the Santander authorities. Now, uh, the social data, data observer respected these uh, geographic areas as well. And, uh, of course, we reported uh, some of the Santander popularity in social uh, networks. Uh, this was actually requested by the Smart Santander um, uh, coordinators who would like to see what is the activity in uh, social networking in Southern Dell. And the web applications and the statistical analysis, as you will see, uh, considers these virtual nodes. Uh, it uh, performs alerting based on the nearest sensor idea. And we also perform uh, what we call a prediction based on the sensor and the area. And the mobile application uh, has these uh, five options. Uh, you will see those better in the, the demo. Uh, we have the environmental conditions, the human sensing, the root recommendations, social media content analysis, and the recommendations, as you will see. And of course, the conductor, the orchestrator, as I said, is the interface, con interface component uh, on, the, on the back end. Now, uh, before starting uh, the videos that uh, will uh, explain better the applications, let me just um, uh, briefly explain what is it that we will see in the demo. Uh, as I said, on the basis of the geographic areas we had, we got the smart certain uh, map. And of course, uh, we have, uh, as you can see here, the areas on the other side and the sensors at the other side. <coughs> the nodes, each sensor on the other. Uh, then we have uh, the web application exposing sensor measurements regarding some of the parameters that are defined by the users and the specific time window. Uh, we will see this in the demo. There are some options here and the user can, uh, let's say, play with time and the sensors. And this is what the graph looks like. So as you can see, it is easy to find out that here we had no measurement at all, that the sensor produced certain values, but then there was a gap in the data. 
So the, this is uh, some of the issues that uh, are detected from our uh, statistical analysis. Uh, the web application also offers this prediction in the sense that uh, we have prediction of specified uh, parameter based, uh, and for a, a specific uh, time window. Uh, as you can see, these reports, what was the activity uh, that uh, a particular sensor had in the past, and this is what we predict uh, for, uh, for the future. Now, for predicting, we use interpolation methods and the statistical analysis uh, functions uh, which support uh, smoothing and which support um, uh, future uh, prediction. Now, uh, of course, in order to verify those, uh, we now uh, plan to have uh, the web application being used in the real uh, smart set and their uh, area and see uh, whether we are right or not. Uh, in the prediction part. Now, uh, this is another uh, option that the web application offers in the sense that you can pick a sensor and you can uh, find out which are the nearest neighbors, let's say three nearest neighbors in this case, and then having the nearest neighbors, you can have the statistical analysis report the different activity of each of those sensors so you can again see all of the missing values, which is the sensor uh, that had the missing values and went in the, in the flow. Is that missing value? Is that the reporting is it? I don't see the zero. Yeah, this is, is uh, uh, zero. You, it doesn't report anything. It's a missing value here, or, uh, but the missing value might be malfunctioning. Uh, it reports a value that is, um, not, uh, uh, I would say that it will trigger an alert. Uh, but the alerts are not just of those values that are not there, but of the values that are um, uh, extreming uh, conditions specified by the user. Uh, I think this will become clear in the demo. Okay. Uh, this is another option of um, finding out aggregated values. This is the aggregated uh, activity uh, in the geographic areas. And this is what we will see in the web application. Uh, also some alerting there. Um, so the mobile application has the authentication part. So the user can log in uh, based on either Facebook or Twitter account, or we also support signing up uh, in the application. And we offer uh, these particular services, as you can see here. And um, uh, one of those, the social data observer, is uh, now underway and the rest are already implemented. Now, what's the idea? Again, we have uh, in the mobile application, this is the screen, uh, where you have the separation in different areas. Uh, what you can see there, the mark is where the user is. Uh, so the, uh, the user with the mobile is captured by the application. And then with the different colors, you have uh, the different uh, measurements and the activity based on uh, whatever the conditions are. Whether you have to, you want the temperature, you want the, the nitrodioxide, the humidity, noise, and so on. At the same time, we offer route planning and uh, route recommendation on the base of uh, environmental conditions, as you will see. Uh, we utilize uh, Google API route recommendation. But at the same time, uh, we have different routes produced uh, for different environmental uh, settings. And um, we have uh, the social activity also displayed for a day, night, and for uh, uh, different, um, uh, and, and also for total here, which is uh, added after uh, I completed the slides. Uh, and of course, uh, we have uh, different uh, subscription to alerting uh, in different areas. As you can see here, uh, these are uh, some of the conditions that are set for alerting. And uh, the user gets uh, alerts in this form, as you will see also in the video. 
and uh, of course the user can then uh, either expose this alerting in, as a posting in Facebook or Twitter and uh, can also verify uh, whether uh, these were uh, right or not as you will see in the application. Now um, we have also some uh, open data um, exposure I would say of the, of the data. We, we use JSON uh, file uh, so, what is the idea here? Uh, the data regarding mobile user sharing of alerts, the alerts that the user would like to share, are also uh, reporting in JSON format uh, and they can be accessed by everybody. Uh, this is just a very brief uh, outline of how the JSON file looks like. We have the measurement, the area, the, what kind of the parameter we are measuring, what is the value, and uh, whether uh, the measurement is true or not. Uh, this ID, as I said, corresponds to the user, so the user is just a number for us. We don't have access to the profile and the details uh, and the personal data. Uh, and uh, again, uh, we have uh, the users acting as sensors, in, uh, as you will see in the screen like that, where, uh, let's say, the temperature is uh, reported by sensors to be 20 degrees Celsius. So the user could detect and define whether this is right or not in a scale up from starting from very cold, cold, normal, warm, hot, and so on. Uh, I don't know if you can see very well, the temperature has one, two, three, four, five scales. Is that relative to the reported temperature or is it completely independent? And it's just completely subjective? independent. This is 20, to, uh, 20 degrees is reported by the sensor values in the area. Then you have the user who can, let's say, say this is very cold or very hot, whatever they want whatever they feel, not uh, whatever the temperature value is reported. So maybe uh, the temperature value reported here is based on uh, uh, some uh, conditions reported by sensors which are, let's say, are uh, in the sun. So it seems that they, they have a very big uh, temperature, very high temperature. But the user might feel uh, cold there. So we might have the user declaring, yes, very cold, cold, whatever. We, this is the human sensing. And we have categorized, as you can see, different levels in the temperature, different levels in CO, different levels in noise, because of course we're not talking about the same measurements. And in order to define these different scales and these different uh, feelings, uh, we, have we have got an advice from uh, some environmental uh, recommendations uh, which are uh, worldwide uh, how it feels like. Uh, there is, a, for example, this heat index uh, which is uh, how the user uh, feels like. As you can see maybe in some uh, weather reporting, you have uh, the temperature but you also have how it feels like. Uh, again, this is also exposed by JSON uh, as open data. And now I will uh, proceed uh, to the demos. Uh, I have prepared, uh, we have prepared some videos. Uh, maybe I will start with the video data observer and then um, I will try to explain as the... Is it uh, okay? Can you see well? The Okay. Yeah, so uh, this is the social data observer and as you can see we have the social activity map and the Twitter content overview. I would say that this uh, module was developed uh, mainly for the use of the smart set and their uh, coordinators. So what's the idea here? Let me just maybe stop the video for a little while. Uh, you have uh, the sat and their CD area. And as you can see here, we have uh, what we call uh, the area popularity index uh, in the sense that uh, we would like to know what is the social activity in the city. Uh, in this case, uh, we have uh, Twitter activity, as you can see from the top over there, in the, at the left side here. 
So what the, what's the situation of the tweeting activity at each of the particular areas defined, as I said, by the, the set of their area? So as you can see, we have number of tweets and a different chromatic uh, palette here. So you can see uh, where uh, most of the activity is. Oh, okay. sorry, I didn't see that. So I, I thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's, uh, I didn't see. I didn't. <laughs> so this is not for panic yeah. students. <laughs> yeah. So uh, as I said, uh, this is the area and the different um, locations. As you can see, we have more intense uh, activity, Twitter activity captured in these particular areas and so on. Uh, now, uh, the idea is that um, the social data observer can give um, a feeling, can give an idea of how users are interacting with particular uh, social media uh, in real time. Oh, I should mention that these uh, measurements and the activities measured uh, on the basis of the last half hour of uh, tweeting activity uh, in uh, this case. And there is no relation Sorry? to the population? No relation to the sensors. No, no, to the population, I mean. So this is uh, related yeah. also to how many people are there. It's not like uh, you say you have this statistic, statistical data from the institute mm -hmm. and you just take how many people live there or are no, no, we don't the area and you divide it. No, no. we don't relate it. Uh, oh, you mean the normalization? Uh, if we perform any kind of normalization, yes. Uh, we actually perform the uh, normalization in the, in the statistical uh, part but not uh, in the social uh, data observer, which is just, um, uh, I would say, strictly numeric uh, <laughs> within the area. Now, what we tried to do is uh, we didn't have um, the values of the population. Uh, the way, so we divided, uh, normalized in the base of the, of the kilometers of the, of the area. Or, uh, on the surface of the of the of each of the geographic locations. Uh, now the rest of the, the social uh, data observer, uh, as you can see, will also um, offer the capability of if you tap, if you go and take to a particular area, you have the area and you also have uh, the number of tweets, then you can filter that uh, for day, night. And we have, uh, oh yes, I should mention this also. Uh, why uh, we had day and night? Because uh, during, uh, uh, from time uh, 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. and from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m., that's how day and night separates. Uh, there is different activity in the city, like uh, the buses start uh, early in the morning at 5 a.m. So uh, the Southern Air uh, Consortium would like to see of how uh, the city operates uh, in social network uh, sense uh, once the day starts and once the day ends. That's why we have the different, uh, the capability of different uh, times here. Again, uh, if you pick certain areas, uh, you can verify that we have uh, more uh, tweets here and more tweets in the other area. Uh, of course, uh, you can reset and uh, uh, we can go to the flicker activity. Flicker activity, as you can see, the numbers are very low. Uh, it seems that people in uh, Smart there are not using flicker so much. Uh, and uh, let me maybe it progresses so a little bit quickly here. Uh, what's uh, the idea that we can uh, go into uh, more detail in the content part? So for Twitter, we can see the tweets and the translated tweets. We, we use Google Translator in English because we didn't know uh, Spanish. Uh, you can see also, um, let me see, maybe it goes a little bit fast. Okay. Uh, where we stop here? Here. So, uh, as I said, uh, in tweets, uh, you can see the tweets that are there. You can translate a, a, a tweet. And uh, at the same time, uh, you have uh, various options. Uh, let me 
this amazing the option that I would like to work on site. Uh, so there are various options here uh, that uh, we can have uh, the Twitter images, we can have the Instagram, the Vine images, and uh, we can have also some uh, Twitter analysis uh, that was uh, needed, as I said, it was requested by the uh, certain <coughs> area supervisors. We can have the user profile, provided, of course, that the user allows that. Uh, so you can see some uh, statistics, uh, where do most of the URLs in Twitter come in Southern there. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's Foursquare here, Instagram, and uh, we can also have uh, the images, the Twitter images that are uh, uh, exposed by URLs. Uh, the, the people and uh, the authorities might see what is the social activity, what is the images that are more, more interest to the users. <coughs> and also we have Instagram URLs uh, that are uh, uh, given in Twitter and we have access to the Instagram images and also videos from, uh, from Vine as you will see right next. Uh, so these are uh, certain videos that can, can be uh, played uh, at real time. Uh, so uh, we have this observer in order to capture, uh, I would say, the social parts of the, of the city. And uh, this is the, the social data observer uh, demo. Okay, so far uh, we have tested it, uh, I would say, for about a month uh, in uh, July, starting from 15 July to 15th August. So we have extensive uh, data and uh, we utilize the observer and uh, uh, we notice the, the different activities and uh, so on that are there. Are there any questions here? <coughs> yes, right. Could this be publicly accessible to others to play with? Uh, uh, yes, we actually we want to discuss with uh, the smart set and the consortium or the uh, coordinators because they, uh, for, for example, the mobile application will, could be offered uh, publicly uh, via the smart set and their credentials and so on. Uh, and of course, the web application will be at hand uh, to the set and their project to decide how to offer this as a URL openly. But for instance, let's say I would like to uh, go into a different city and I mean, at least use, for instance, the tools that you have for the social observer part. Yeah. No, not the sensor part, the observer part. Will I be able to, for instance, also run this kind of tool set on, on Paris, for instance, or, or well, any other city? I mean, yeah. uh, it will demand further um, customization because you know now it is a uh, program and it runs based on the data stores of uh, Southern Dell. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, what you are referring to uh, requires another level of implementation where you can choose uh, the location, create the data stores, yeah. and then of course on top of these data stores uh, implement. Uh, it would be quite interesting, let's say I can yeah. take your app, for instance, and I, yeah. I then can also catch all, let's say, Twitter feeds, all the mm -hmm. Instagram feeds from a particular geographic region, mm -hmm. and I can run the analysis on top. I mean, this would be yeah, brilliant. Yeah, ideally, and, um, yes, uh, this would be the, the choice. Actually, you mentioned Paris. Uh, we have worked with uh, data for um, uh, research work we're carrying out. We have worked with data from London and Paris uh, because uh, in our group we're also interested in topic detection uh, from social networks. So uh, we have uh, utilized these ideas there. And uh, it was quite um, important that we have the geographical areas uh, in Santander. You need also the geographical areas from each of the cities. Okay. Now, in terms of the web application, let's see the video for the web application next. Uh, where um, we had some discussions on how to better um, implement it. Maybe some of the graphics and the design are not the ideal ones, but uh, we had to carry a lot of, uh, a lot of work for, uh, for implementing it in um, 
the full screen gave a bit Okay, anyway, I hope you can see that. Uh, yeah, yes. So what was the idea? Uh, the idea was to have in the web application uh, a different pane for the areas. The, all of these 148 areas. And we have different, as you will see, capabilities for the user requirements. So on top here, we have time window and the user options that are given by the user, of course. Here we have the sensor list, and here we have the capability of the metrics and the alerting. So if, let's say, the first task is to show all of the sensors, then the idea <coughs> is that the user can say show all, and all of the sensors uh, are uh, displayed. Now, the next part was to have a sensor value charts, as uh, you will see. And the idea was that uh, we might pick, we go, first of all, the sensors are, uh, as you can see, the icons, these are for noise, for example. You can pick a particular sensor, and then you click on the sensor, and you have the particular sensor, as you can see, diagram for uh, the timestamp that is chosen by the user and the values that we have for this particular sensor. So as you can see, there is um, a flow of values that is reported. We have uh, smooth uh, values uh, evaluation here. And then we have some drops in the data values that are produced for the particular sensor. So uh, the, the authorities, let's say, or the manager of the sensor network can easily pick a sensor from the... Uh, and you can see, of course, that once you go over uh, the graph, you can see the particular values. Now, in terms of the chart, we have uh, two options. Uh, we can expose the chart into two graphical formats. The, ones you, uh, the one is uh, with using JavaScript and the other one is using our, uh, the R language. And as you can see here, we have all of those gaps in the production of values, which really is it's the previous one, as you can see, where we had no value there. We have some missing values. This is a problem in uh, statistical analysis, and this is a problem in evaluating, of course, aggregated values and evaluating missing values. Now, uh, if we uh, proceed, uh, you can see that um, we also have the capability, I think I mentioned that before, of the nearest k and then nearest values. So if we pick uh, here, let's say, three nearest values, uh, we can, uh, uh, this is the one, okay, we, can, we can see which is the closest to this uh, chosen sensor, which is the closest one. And uh, we can see then what are the statistics of these two very close sensors. And as you can see, uh, we have one of the sensor value uh, having just one gap in the, in the missing values uh, part, but then we have the other sensor exposing quite a few of the gaps there. So the situation is that once we have alerting for a certain area, we can look deeper into one or even two or even as we will see more of the sensors and identify whether there is a particular sensor which is malfunctioning, whether the sensor needs replacement, uh, and so on. Yeah. Is there any mechanism to annotate the data? Annotate. Uh, I mean, if, if users are looking at the data, it would be useful to to have this information that's strictly related to that data flow at that uh, time? Uh, well, we don't really offer annotation at this level. I mean, you mean uh, having uh, the users to report uh, something at this gap? Uh, this is a statistical analysis which we address uh, more or less the authorities because the users uh, will never have, I mean, the citizens. Uh, no, I mean, even if there is uh, an employee or an authority or 
Oh, okay, yeah. Who are um, a user of the system? Yeah, the thing is that um, we don't offer this automatically, but it would be, added. yeah, so far we don't offer it. But it is a nice idea that uh, you mean uh, once we have the gap here, we can have the employee writing up the report of the date, the time, whatever. I mean, it, it, that's, that's probably, okay, in my opinion, that's just a packet that wasn't received because the radio at that moment was not working, well, and then it, then it started to work again. And it started to work again, so I don't care about the data. I can, I can mm -hmm. just say, okay, it's not a sensor that's broken. Yeah, maybe you mean it's like uh, having the authority employee to keep kind of, some kind of notes. Yes. Automatically. But yes. That st they stay completely related and become metadata of these time series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't really offer that up now, but uh, maybe this is a good idea, you know, for the for the extension. Uh, now, similarly, if I go on with the video, as you will see, and uh, of course, um, uh, the, again, the curves offer all of the different point values, um, and you can view the values. If we choose to find the three nearest neighbors, uh, the three nearest neighbors are uh, displayed on the map. And again, uh, you can have uh, the chart values of the uh, and uh, we offer the capability of viewing all of those together and then at the same time uh, you can uh, go over the particular measurements of each of the sensors. Uh, but then also you can uh, forget one of those three and focus on the, oh, those four and keep uh, two or three or so on. So the, I would say that the application is flexible in uh, choosing which of the, of the sensors you would like uh, to see. Now the virtual sensor idea comes from the aggregated values. So if we choose a, a particular time and uh, we choose a particular temperature, let's say in this case threshold, uh, we can uh, see what is the what is the aggregated value for the particular area, evaluated uh, out of uh, the 15 last minutes of uh, of activity uh, of the particular uh, virtual node. Uh, I don't know if this is clear. Uh, maybe I repeat that. Uh, okay. So the virtual sensor uh, node had to do with exposing the virtual value. So we got this particular area, we choose the date, and we have uh, all of the metrics to be shown. We, we have the ability uh, to choose here noise, temperature, humidity, whatever, all of the different uh, eight uh, different environmental parameters. So if we choose uh, temperature, we get uh, for the area uh, the different uh, aggregated values. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have some issues here uh, with extreme uh, conditions. And uh, again, these values can be also exposed either in R or in, uh, with uh, the JavaScript uh, tool uh, that I've mentioned before. Which aggregation function are you using? Just averaging, or can the user somehow specify? Uh, it's the mean average, and we also use uh, time uh, sliding time window averaging because. Uh, so there's no possibility to specify a user defined averaging or uh, not averaging it is as aggregation it. function. It is possible, yes, but uh, we relied on very simple uh, functions from the beginning just to make sure that this works. Yes. And uh, actually, uh, now our statistical uh, group, uh, people who are working in statistical analysis, are trying to improve uh, the means, evaluation, the prediction part, and so on. Because, uh, as I said, we wanted to have something to run first, and then uh, now that we are improving uh, uh, the evaluations. Uh, this is another display of uh, using R, and uh, in terms of the prediction as well, uh, we have uh, the values and we have uh, the ability to choose uh, the prediction uh, period. So if we choose another 
uh, environmental condition and uh, a time uh, window. Uh, with a prediction value, it has to do with uh, how long would you like to predict for. So 20% stands for 20% of the time based on the period we have and 20% ahead of time. So this is how the prediction uh, looks like. This is what we expect on the basis of the previous uh, values. As I said, this prediction should be, of course, uh, be validated. And uh, we plan to offer this uh, in Southern Air uh, Area users and have them to um, uh, have them to have uh, opinions about the predictions. Now, in terms of the alerting part, as you can see, first of all, we cancel of course the prediction here. Uh, the alerting part in a uh, web application is different than the alerting part of uh, the mobile application. So we have the user specifying the alert criteria. So here, uh, I don't know if it was clear in the video, the user specifies that he would like to see when will alerting be produced in the area for the temperature being greater than a specific value. So let's say this is temperature greater than uh, 14 or 18, then uh, we, we have to show the alerting area. So this is the saving area is where the alerting will occur on the basis of the criterion set by the user. If the user changes the criterion, as you will see, less of the areas are, are here. So we have an alerting uh, being displayed uh, in this uh, chromatic uh, red color uh, for a specific time, for the specific uh, conditions that are set by the users. So by this uh, uh, capability, we can have the user viewing the geographic area which exposed alerting based on a user-specified criteria. Is this easy to understand? I mean, uh, you can say the noise or the temperature, different criteria. Let's say, for example, that for some reason the authority would like to see which are the different areas in Saturn there that had um, temperature or humidity over a certain value. They can see the areas very, very quickly then they can change the criterion. They can see temperatures uh, lower than this value or humidity lower than the other. So it's easy uh, to demonstrate this alerting on, uh, on the different areas. And um, again, uh, to verify that the alert areas were right, uh, you can see again the, the aggregated values that were, uh, were captured the time that they were, when they were captured and the, and the variety in the graph. So uh, that was the web application and, uh, and to end up with the mobile application. Yes. Um, you, so you said that uh, there is possibility to specify some alerts. Are they also working on a real time basis? I mean, is it, a basis? Is it working like alert and join, running and uh, waiting for some events to be triggered and then it can send some alerts or for now it's on the historic data. Yeah, uh, thank you for pointing this out. As I said, this alerting is different than the real time alerting. This alerting is based on, uh, I would say, the archival data, the past data. The real-time alerting occurs in the mobile application that I will uh, now uh, so show. It's, it's a different alerting. So it completely relies on the mobile app. There is no centralized alert in giant. That yes. Sense. Yes, because sorry, if I interrupt. Okay, yeah. okay. So uh, you can see the. Yeah, app. because uh, you uh, the the idea of alerting in web application is different. Maybe the alerting has to do with uh, specific conditions which are not uh, abnormal, let's say. It's not temperature over uh, 40 degrees. Uh, it's an alert that the user would like to, to take a look at. But in the mobile application, that, which is the last to, to show, uh, 
you will see how it works. So first of all, uh, the initial part is just uh, for logins. Nothing uh, special here, uh, like in the other mobile applications. Uh, we offer connectivity with uh, Facebook and Twitter account. And as I said, we also have a sign up uh, with user uh, uh, declaring uh, their personal uh, data. Uh, some of them are optional, some are not. And we also have uh, the whether a user is a citizen of Southern Dare in order uh, to, to see whether uh, there are users who are uh, originally residents in Southern Dare. And uh, here is just login now. We have uh, an account that uh, we create ourselves and uh, we log in. Now, these are the different options that we offer in the mobile application, uh, the environmental conditions, the route planning, the popular places, the city area, social activity, and the social data observer. Now, these two, the popular places and the social data observer are currently uh, not fully functional. Now, first of all, we start uh, with uh, the environmental conditions being displayed. As you can see, first of all, this marker is where uh, the, the user is with the mobile phone. And then you have a chosen temperature, and you can see all of these uh, areas we saw in uh, Southern Dell in a chromatic palette with the temperature uh, values. So we can see that here there is more heat maybe in these, uh, for some reason in these areas, and the rest of the areas have a different temperature. This is very easily displayed uh, in, uh, in the mobile application. Uh, and uh, now um, okay, the user can uh, tap uh, to each of the areas and see more details. The user can see a different chromatic palette for all of the environmental conditions. So he can choose um, CO, noise, let's say the user so has chosen noise. Now this palette has to do of course with the noise uh, values, the noise metric. And uh, you have the different colors based on the different uh, noise uh, uh, I, no, noise values. Now the idea is that we can, of course, uh, get a report of uh, the exact area where the user is and what are the average values uh, right now. And uh, the user can uh, tap, hold and tap, like we perform in mobile applications, and uh, he can uh, verify uh, his opinion or not, as you will see. So this is the, I, I think I showed this on the slides also. This is what the user has, that the, this is the temperature and the user can choose normal in that case. For the noise, he can choose uh, whatever he likes, noisy. So this is how uh, we implement this human sensing. We expose the values that are captured from the, from the sensors but the human sensing can be verified uh, with a mobile application in an easy uh, tap uh, way manner. And uh, then, uh, as you will see, um, we also have the ability to find the root planner. So we chose a root planner. Let's say I'm in a point A, as it is detected from my mobile phone. And then uh, I will choose uh, where I want to go. Let's say I want to go in this place. So from here to here. So the user would like to go from A to B. And then we have the criterion to be chosen. This means you would like to find the route based on which criteria? Lower temperature, lower noise, you can see lower pollution, and so on. So depending on uh, the user's choice, uh, we have the different uh, routes. Uh, as I said, we use the Google uh, API. But now, as you can see, as I'm in the process of uh, finding out the route, there is an alerting that pop up in the application. This alert says that the area such and such has a problem and has an overthread uh, value as extreme uh, particles condition value. There is uh, something the particle condition in the area. This is an area where the user uh, has subscribed to 
and this pops up in the application once the, uh, the alert takes place. And then uh, uh, the user can share this to either tweeting or Facebook account and the posting will be produced, uh, as I said, with just a simple uh, sentence. So the alerting is now is taken care of by the user and this is a suggestion for the route based on the criterion we gave. If we give another criterion for the temperature, then we will have another uh, routing depending on the temperature to avoid high and over threshold uh, values. Uh, then the city area social activity is also exposed in the application. You have, uh, this is the number of shared photos uh, from Flickr here. You can see the chromatic palette again with how many photos were shared. Uh, you can choose the total during the day or during the night. And um, you can have uh, also some access to the content. <coughs> this is a Twitter image and these are uh, some images you, you have uh, found, uh, we have found in uh, tweeting activity. And again, uh, we have the Twitter uh, popularity uh, shown in the geographic areas and the number of tweets we have. Um, and this is uh, a tag analysis uh, we perform based on those tweets, which are the most popular tweet, uh, tweet, Twitter uh, terms here. Uh, we uh, now work in uh, making uh, this uh, offered as a tag cloud and uh, as a more, uh, in a more uh, design, better design. <laughs> Okay, that's all. Sorry for keeping you so late, but please uh, let me know if there are uh, yeah. questions. Yeah. I mean, in terms of like, uh, I mean, the idea of defining like going from A to B uh, based on, uh, let's say, sensor data. Mm -hmm. um, how well is this received by the, by the users? I mean, I can understand, for instance, I want to avoid an area of, of high pollution or noise mm -hmm. or something like this. Mm -hmm. But uh, do you think temperature or other things have, have actually a big impact on the user for selecting this kind of? Uh, uh, have, you look, have you had a look actually how useful it is for a user to know about this? I mean, yeah. The thing is, uh, of course, the, as I said, uh, these are, have not been used by real users in Satan Death. This is something that we would like to see. Uh, maybe some of the, of the criteria are not really meaningful. Uh, I mean, maybe few of the people will utilize the, the temperature. Uh, but maybe some more of the people will utilize the particle based on their health conditions, as I said. Or maybe they will utilize, some of the people will utilize the noise. Um, Could you also in integrate like demographic information, like crime figures, mm. and things like this? Or this is an idea that we had uh, in another yeah, yeah, yeah. project actually, to integrate yeah. the tagging activity and the trending topics yeah. with the user uh, routing. Uh, but of course, um, we are very open in testing this in Southern there and having the input from uh, feedback from the users in improving the maybe the criteria. And so on. Okay. More questions? No? Okay, I think everyone wants to go for lunch. Yes. <laughs> so please uh, give me join me in to give an applause. Yeah? Thank you. summer school uh, ending and uh, all of the projects and uh, it was very glad and I was very glad to meet you all thank you so much thanks, thanks. thanks. thanks.